So thank you for attending our ALN STEM um, digital network party. Thank you for all being here. Um, I'm Angela Dvorak. I work at Harland AEA. Um, I'm a professional learning leadership consultant and on the future ready and transition teams at Harland. Um, and we are super excited to have you here today and to hear more from our future school, EBF, Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont. So thank you for all being here. And I'll hand it over to Amanda to introduce herself as well. So I am Amanda Brink. I'm at Great Prairie AA, and I'm a future ready consultant um, down here in Adamwa. So, and so, yes, I'm excited as well to see what EBF has to share with us today. Yes. Our hopes today is that you guys get a chance to hear some great and inspiring stories, but also um, engage, react, back channel, see your friends, chat with each other, um, and network. Um, hopefully make some new connections that you can bring back um, and implement or engage in, in your district as well. So please keep coming back to these uh, to hear more great and inspiring stories. Uh, and <laughs> this little gif is making me laugh right now. It's St. Patrick's Day is coming up soon. So um, we're going to uh, start you off with a welcoming activity um, and just have you think about and then maybe put in the chat or if you're um, inspired to come off mute, mute and tell us who a champion is in your life for one of these areas. This is what's called we call a champion network map and we do this activity during our meaningful career conversations. Um, training and it's just thinking about who are those champions in your life, either social, educational, professional, personal, or recreational who have helped you, support you, um, be your cheerleader um, to help you get to where you're at today, um, help you learn and grow. So um, if you have a moment in the chat, please go ahead and put who is your champion and why um, in one of these areas. Give me a minute to think about that. if you had a meaningful connection with someone as you were growing up in school, at work, um, socially, who was that person and why are they a champion for you when you think back and reflect on that? So you can either come off mute and share or put it in the chat. Yeah, I'm there with you, Laura. My daughter is also uh, a young girl at four years old and definitely every day as a mom, she uh, she is a champion for me, for sure. Especially with all the mommies, I love you and mommy, please and mommy this and mommy that, yeah. Educational, all right. Second grade teacher who inspired and allowed me to be curious. Awesome. Thank you, Tanya. Who, who, who was your champion and why and in what area? Making those meaningful connections to those, thinking back how they can, uh, inspired you. Yes, education right now, it's Cindy Yellick. Yeah, so Cindy Yellick is our chief at Heartland AEA and she is pretty much at the Capitol, I would say almost every day, um, advocating and meeting and doing some really hard work right now. So yes, definitely a hero and a champion for us professionally. Anyone else wanna share about their champion? Katie, yes, love all my babies, but my daycare provider, awesome. Yeah, it's your champion. Recreational. <laughs> so you have a bike bike rider that you uh, sometimes ride with, Laura, who's a champion, because he keeps you going, <laughs> right? And it's 70 years old. Awesome. Yeah, he's amazing. I'll just say it out loud. He's amazing. And just like, I always think, God, I hope I'm like that good when I get older. I don't know. Oh, inspired. Yeah. 
So when we think about doing this um, activity with kids, we um, really want to make sure that kids have a map of champions uh, that are in their network and that they know that they can go to and that will support them. And thinking about who those people are um, and leaning on those uh, when you need to. Uh, so uh, when we think about this, just uh, be thinking about how you can help create these moments for kids in your classroom or with what you're doing uh, through authentic learning, STEM, whatever it might be, um, to build those net, the, the network and those champions for your students. Uh, awesome. Thank you guys for participating in this. And we are going to, if you have another champion to think of, throw it in the chat and we'll keep celebrating those throughout this time. All right. So we're so going to have some updates now from Tanya about um, some networking and sharing um, and some other um, upcoming opportunities. So I'm going to put myself on mute and have Tanya take over. Yes, I'm hoping you'll advance the slide as I'm trying to even remember what those updates are. Oh, yeah, Laura's probably, I'll be your hype woman and you can add on to this uh, because I know I'm excited about this event and will plan on being there and shared with my network of STEM best in hopes that their students will be attending and showcasing some of their events at the next virtual student expo. But Laura, anything to add? Yeah, just, you know, right now we're really in the process of trying to find um, stories to share and we really want to, um, you know, elevate our students in this expo. So really student voice is critical. So um, if you're here now, I know there's a couple of educators on the call. Um, I see Marshalltown. We definitely need you guys to come and share. Um, but if you are watching the recording, um, please consider uh, doing a 15 minute just sort of live session. And it can be a group of students. It doesn't have to be just one to kind of talk about their authentic learning. Um, we will have an excellent keynote in the morning, which we're pretty pumped about, Ken Shelton, um, really great storyteller. And so we just hope it's a great morning. We shorten the day so that um, hopefully more people can come and, you know, attend more sessions and focus on that morning. So uh, Stephanie, you're a big planner on this. If you have anything to add, <laughs> throw it to you. I think you covered it. We're just excited and hope everyone joins us. Yeah, it'll be an awesome event. Um, a great opportunity too. I hope more students have the opportunity to attend and it's great practice to show and tell um, what they've been doing. Oh, here's some STEM stuff for you. Uh, if this weather, you could be thinking about summer already. It feels like summer. Uh, if you want a summer opportunity, you could connect with the STEM externships. It's a six week aid opportunity where you as a teacher get connected with a local business workplace to get uh, to really connect with that uh, overarching question that all of our students ask, when am I ever going to need to use this? How This isn't going to be relevant. I'll never use it. Well, hopefully your externship experience will connect and be able to answer that. So you get to see the behind the scenes experience, what that workplace host does in your area, and then connect it to a project-based learning experience that benefits your classroom. So our externships coordinator is Ann Gritzner, her contact information on there, and she is the ultimate matchmaker for that experience. So sign up now. Um, the application information is there as well. The other opportunity, if you've been familiar, we've had summits in the past. We're going to be showcasing the Iowa Classrooms Flex Workplaces Summit in 2024, which is happening in a few short weeks of April 10th, Wednesday, April 10th. It is free. There's no cost. It's at the Iowa Events Center in Des Moines. Um, we try to build uh, an event that connects exactly that classroom and workplace experiences. It's a great networking opportunity. So hope that you can um, register and registration information should be linked there. So if we, we send out this um, something, you'll be able to get directly linked with the registration on that. So thank you for all that. And so today I'm like, I'm, 
our pictures aren't showing up right now, but um, today we're going to hear from Medieval Blakesburg Fremont Community Schools here in Southeast Iowa. They've been doing some amazing things within their own building, in their own shop, um, through Buildings and Trades, um, and as well as their robotics. Um, and so I'm going to kind of hand it off to Mr. Rick Rainier and his wife, Lisa Rainier, is the robotics instructor as well, but they've been doing some amazing things. And so I just wanted to share that with you. I've been following them on Facebook, and so it's been amazing to watch. And so, um, Rick, it's all to you guys right now, so. Oh, you're still muted. How about now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for the invite today. Uh, what we're going to do a little bit is, first of all, like I said, I'm Rick Rainier. I'm the building and trades instructor. This is my first year at, uh, at Eddieville. And up until then, I was a licensed contractor. And finally got tired of not having anybody out there that I could hire that had any skills. So when they approached me on this job, I thought, yeah, that might be might be a good thing. At least I can get back a little bit. So I'm really enjoying teaching the kids. Uh, I also uh, co-teach robotics uh, with my wife, which is hiding off a camera here. Uh, up until this year, with her, she started the program like three years ago. And until that time, I was voluntold. Now I actually am a co-teacher with her. I also have uh, Garrett Tuller, uh, one of our students. He is in uh, robotics as well as in the building and trades program. And what I'm going to do is we're going to try to give you a little tour of things here. I'm going to walk around with a computer. Hopefully you can see what he's talking about. And he's going to explain a few things to you. So, Garrett, can you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Garrett. Um, I've been in robotics for about three years now. And this is my first year in the building and trades program. Uh, I got into it because I heard Rick was going to take over this year and clean up the shop and everything. And I've known him be obviously because of robotics for a few years. Uh, it's been, it's been pretty nice this year. It's a pretty good program. I've learned quite a bit and been able to apply it pretty well to robotics. It's helped me a lot. I've learned a lot with as far as tools and everything go. Um, talking about, yeah, I'm going to start over with, the Oh, All right, so basically what we've been doing this year, um, as far as the format for learning stuff goes, is we'll, we'll start over here and learn uh, specific skills like wiring and we've got plumbing over there. We'll learn it in smaller scales, like here we've got two and three-way switches wired up, as, long as, as well as receptacles and lights. And then we've also got the whole breaker box set up here, so we're just learning to assemble all of that. And then we take what we've learned here and we put it all over on a big building over there. Um, there's our plumbing. And you see, as you can see, we've done water heaters and all the sinks and everything. And we take what we learned there and we apply it to the little building we've got built here in the shop. Um, we, we framed and put all the roofing and everything on it this year. Uh, that was a first semester project mostly. And then we started wiring it towards the end of the first semester. We put all the wiring in it and currently we're working on plumbing it. Uh, do you want to show them the inside or? Yeah, we can. Okay, so up in here you can see we've got everything that's over there on those boards um, split or put applied to real world practice here. We've got all the light switches and receptacles and everything in here. There's we've got our breaker box and our uh, water heater right here. Uh, it's per it's perfect little spot for for learning to apply all these things to like as if we were actually building a house, um, but except on a smaller scale, small enough we can fit in the shop. Over here, we've got our robot for our robotics program. Um, we just about have it completed. It will suck up a ring, and it'll feed a ring into here, and spin these wheels to shoot it out up to a up to a uh, uh, slot that's like six or eight feet in the air. Um, and then it also it doesn't have them on right now because we're having to adjust them. It will. Uh, be, it has hooks on it that shoot up and grab a chain and pull itself up. Uh, that that will be completed here in two weeks is when we're going to go to the competition. Um, we basically just compete against a bunch of other robots 
see these wheels pull down in there and then it shoots it back out. Uh, we compete against a bunch of other robots and uh, it's what, like 40 or 50, 50 schools that 50 different teams that build robots. And I think we're going to do pretty well this year. Uh, it certainly helped to this year for me to have my, as I've said before, my building and trades knowledge. Uh, it's, I've been able to be a lot more efficient with getting stuff put together. Uh, my team and I are just about finished here. We've got to just wire it, finish wiring it, and like I said, adjust the hookers, and then the coating should be good. Um, do you want to talk about the baby bots? So we've got these smaller robots that we were using to teach the junior hires a little bit, get them exposed to our program, so they might be more excited about it when it comes time to be in high school and maybe be eligible to join. Uh, we have built these. We took. We would take. Um, small groups of them out of junior high robotics and we'd have them come in here and build these with us and then drive them around uh, that took like only a couple days and we'd run like four of them through at a time and okay so we've been we've done several service projects um, for example we've been writing letters and uh, we went and helped oh wait no that was track yeah well okay so the track team is basically the robotics team <laughs> all of the guys who went and helped, we, we helped move somebody. Uh, oh, yeah, we helped that lady move. And then we helped clean out a rental house for some guy. Uh, and then we helped, we helped with the food pantry quite a bit. We helped clean them out and move them. And we helped with a lot of stuff in the, like, the STEM area with the younger kids. Like, we, took, we completely did the STEM night this year. It, it was completely thrown on us to do it. And we just brought a bunch of little things, down, little exhibits down and little, all of our robots and little projects we've done. And we had a bunch of little kids come around and learn about them, see everything. So they're exposed to the STEM, it's the, like the whole STEM community at an early age. Uh, what else? That's my guy question. You guys have any questions for me? or? How was it working with kids? Um, It was pretty interesting. Uh. They seem to, they seem, kids obviously enjoy robots a lot. There's a lot going on. So it, they like, to, they like to learn about them. Um, I think it's definitely good to teach them about it. Uh, I've had quite a bit of fun with them. So. What's the most meaningful um, or important skill that you think you've learned throughout all these projects? Just, just like um, learning like an engineering thought process. Uh, it's super like it, it takes a little bit to train your brain to think like an engineer, like all the problems, the different ways we problem solve and everything. It will, it's definitely helpful in your everyday life. Um, helps you and especially in the future when it's time to get a job. Uh, people, people, employers seem to like to have people who think well, problem solve. So through the authentic learning process that you've been doing, why is why is the authentic part, or is it has it been better for you to learn, or is it is it a new way to learn? I mean, like explain how that process has gone for you. Like, okay, so um, real this helps this helps with real life scenarios because like, uh, you're gonna be a, like for example for me. And it taught me, I've learned so much about wiring. Like I knew nothing about wiring before I got into robotics and building and trades. Um, so like if ever nowadays, not a lot of people know basic skills, like with their home and everything, they just call somebody to help come do it. Um, it'll help me in my future to like, if I have some short, small wiring failure in my house, I'll be able to fix it myself. And um, yes, it's definitely, it's definitely boosted my confidence with all kinds of stuff like this. Like, I'm going to be able to fix my own problems very like a, a, a lot more confident with fixing my own problems versus having to call somebody to come do it. Uh, it'll be like with the building, I've done just about everything, like all the basic pieces of having a house. I've done it. I know what I'm doing with it now. So I'll be able to, I'm essentially will be able to build a house. <laughs> Thinking about teamwork and working with others like what are some of the challenges you might have had or some of the positive things that have come out of that as well we definitely learned to work as a team we put in some long hours as far as robotics goes it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of collaboration you got to bounce ideas off of each other and learn to develop your ideas based off of what other people think and uh 
it it's super important to work as a team with this because alone you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to work through all of this alone in your own head it's going to it takes different people like my job is wiring that's my specific job but i help build and help design a little bit um some of us some of them the guys are more proficient with like cad which is computer aided design like 3d blueprinting is what it is it's pretty difficult but some of them are very good at it so we have them do that most of that while we help them like you think through all the designing and whatever and then we have people who are better at building, actually building things, more proficient with tools, like myself and a couple of other guys. And then we have people who, we have a guy who's much better at coding than any of us. So we have him do most of the coding. And we kind of just, we have to put all of our little skills together in order to make a functioning robot. And you keep saying guys, but do you have some girls that are doing this? Yes, we do as well. Sorry, my, I just referred. They're just all my guys, but yes, we do have we do have a girl. She's very helpful to us. Um, she helps with a lot of the design ideas. She, I think she designed she designed her t-shirts. And she designed her t-shirts and her website, and she does all of the things that I could never possibly do. I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. Um, so you guys build off of each other's strengths, and then you work yeah. on through all this as well and so and in the building and trades program there's a lot of girls in it it's probably what do you, do you think it's probably 50 50 boys probably, and girls probably close. yeah it's 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 pretty well split between boys and girls we got a lot of girls doing cool things in building and trades did you have another question have you signed up to present at the expo yet <laughs> What expo? Uh, what expo? <laughs> <laughs> Laura, take it away. <laughs> you definitely should. Um, you showcase kind of the work, kind of like what you're doing right, right now. So it would be like, in a way, kind of like a repeat, but um, you'll have a bigger audience and it'll be sort of a streamlined on an on-demand session for other students to watch. So it's not just like adults learning about programming. It's about other, you know, teenagers like yourself, like learning about the program. So you should totally do it. <laughs> we'll probably do it. We'll give us we'll thoughts. Give thought. yeah. We'll think about it. Yay. Okay, good. We'll yes, send you. Do the it. Do it. <laughs> I'd, I'd like. I'd also like to add that we have a, a mentor from uh, John Deere uh, that is an engineer, uh, Kevin Simons. Uh, works great with the boys. He's very valuable as far as, you know, giving them engineering ideas. He goes to competition with us and uh, he's kind of been a godsend and we really appreciate, uh, you know, John Deere giving us that mentorship. Um, just kind of close out a little bit. We got some exciting things that are happening here uh, right now. Uh, the shop is not a very, good classroom environment. So I made a proposal. We're actually going to build a 480 square foot dedicated classroom in the shop. Uh, so when the kids are in there, they know that's classroom. When they're out here, they know that it is uh, shop work. And next year, I'm also working on introducing uh, uh, architectural design uh, through CAD to my um, seniors and some of the juniors so the program we're looking at is chief architect which i know some of the businesses around here use that will just give them a little bit more experience uh, the idea is we've kind of divided the program up into three levels next year so they're just being a uh, shop class i will have a introductory to building and trades which would be anybody that did not take it this year doesn't matter what grade they're in then i will have a second year the second year, we'll all introduce a little bit to the CAD, and then they're going to concentrate on building uh, portable sheds, uh, buildings, and things like that on a smaller scale. And then I will have an advanced uh, class, which will actually be building uh, a couple of uh, vehicle buildings here on campus that Mr. Williamson's talked to us about. So pretty excited for, for next year and all these new things to come. So... That's basically what we have, unless somebody has any questions. Well, and I, you talked about partnering with John Deere, and I know, like, between you and Lisa, like, there's been a lot of funding in the background, too, and working with different businesses 
to get where they are now. And like with the, a lot of the different stuff and there's Mrs. Rainier right there in the picture now, but yes, I'm like, but there's been a lot of amazing things happen and collaboration between like AEA and businesses and us. I mean, so like, there's been a lot of great things happening to make a lot of this role for you. Go ahead, Lise. Do you have anything? Um, we work with Cargill Cares that their committee has been very generous to us in funding uh, the equipment that we need. Any, anything I've asked for, they have been like, yep, you betcha. And so we've been able to provide these experiences for the kids because of this financial backing. Uh, we also have a CNC machine that these kids get to play on, which isn't something kiddos get to do. We also, I've, with this funding, I've also bought different robots and a robotic arm for gardening that we're going to work on this spring. So for me, the sky's the limit. Like you give me the money, I will find things for these kiddos to experience and be a part of. And uh, <clears throat> Marty Roberts uh, there at Indian Hills, he's been very helpful to us. Uh, on a lot of different things. We took the robotics kids, did a tour uh, of the machine shop. Uh, he has uh, produced some parts that we needed for the robot. So we, we have a good close working relationship with him, which really helps because of course he has some of the equipment that we do not. Well, awesome. Does anybody else have any more questions? Like you guys shared a lot of amazing things on how you connected it to make it authentic. And so, and so, and, and it's continuing to be so, and it's grown from three years ago to now too. So it's been a lot of growing pains, but you're still there. So it's not, it just doesn't happen overnight. And so you guys did an awesome job and thank you and to Garrett as well. So anybody yes, else? I have just one last question. Like if you have a piece of advice for the educators out there that are looking to make things more authentic, or in, you know, start to include STEM more, what piece of advice would you give them? Um, go get it. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is our philosophy. We don't like people in our way. They know when the Rhineers are coming through. Garrett knows that. Um, go get the funding. If you can't find it, go somewhere else and get these kids hands-on experience that uh, nobody else has and don't stop. Yeah, you can't be shy. You got to reach out and grab every resource that you can possibly get through all your organizations because, you know, bottom line is it's it's for students like Garrett. I mean, that's why we all do this. Uh, or else I'd be retired sitting on a pond bank fishing. But... No, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again. And we're going to continue with a few things, but if you guys need to hop off, that's fine as well. But we appreciate your time and all the